Hello, all free crochet community. Selena Baca here, founder, host, lead educator with the American Crochet Association. And I am here partnering together with my friends at All Free Crochet to bring you a mystery granny square crochet along. Uh, long name, but hopefully you guys are really enjoying this process so far. If you guys are watching live, come on over, say hey, say hello, tell me where you're viewing from. As long as I'm here live, I'll give you an extra special shout out in just a minute. I got a long agenda to go through. If you guys have any questions, comments, feedback about the mystery granny square poncho, go on ahead and post them on these videos as you're watching them. And as soon as I see them, I will get right back to you. Now, some of the questions that I've been getting so far, because this is week two, this is part two. Uh, some of the questions that I'm getting so far are just where can I find details, just looking for specifications about the yarn or the sizing or anything that I'm talking about, instructions, you want to know what's next. If you guys want the most detailed information and you want to get a notification as soon as that information is ready, make sure that you subscribe. All you have to do to subscribe is click on the link in the video description here. It's going to take you to the page for this crochet along. I say this because I'm looking at the page, so it's right over here. So click on that link in the video description after this video. It's going to give you all of the details for this crochet along. And you can even sign up for email notifications. And that way, as updates are made to this crochet along, you guys will be the first to know. Okay, so make sure that you subscribe. That really will be the best way to follow along. Okay, guys, so like I said, this is part two of this crochet along. For part one of the crochet along, watch my last video from last week, because that's where I talked about the yarn that I used for this crochet along, why I chose this yarn, how you can substitute yarn, and just different things to look for as you're substituting yarn. So this is really where we're getting into picking up the yarn and picking up hook and we're putting those two together and we're actually going to start crocheting. So I've got a few tips and tricks that I wanted to cover. But again, if you guys want video resources, if you want those pattern instructions, click on the link in the video description and make sure you subscribe to get updates, okay? So we are going to start this granny square poncho with granny squares. This entire poncho is not going to be granny squares, but it certainly starts out with them that way. Now I am calling this a mystery crochet along because we haven't shown you the finished project yet. That's gonna be unveiled with each part that we crochet, which makes it a little fun and interesting, right? But in all fairness, it is kind of a larger project and that's why we're giving you all the details like this, okay? So we are going to start by making granny squares. Here is just a really big representation. I don't suggest making them with big bulky yarn like this, but I did wanna use a big bulky yarn for the video tutorials that I made just so you can really see the yarn and the stitches and you can see what's going on, especially if you've never made a granny square before. So this could be your great first introduction if you've never made a granny square before or if you're just looking for a different way to approach granny squares just because there's a few different ways that you can start them or work them, which I always find interesting whenever I find a new way people make granny squares. So what you're going to do is if you are following the pattern exactly because maybe you're using the same yarn that the pattern calls for or a substitute that's so similar that it's gonna work up to be about the same, what you're going to do is you're going to follow the instructions to make at least one granny square. Let's start there, okay? Now again, maybe you're using the exact same yarn that I called for in the pattern. So whenever you make your granny square and the pattern says make six rounds, because that's exactly what I did in my pattern, um, and that gives you the exact measurement that you're looking for, then great, That's you followed it exactly, that's exactly the size that you need, perfect. Let's say maybe you're substituting yarn, maybe not, and you wanna make sure that the granny square that you are making is gonna be the best size for the poncho that you're making. I've got a little secret for you, okay? And it's not very difficult. Now, whatever size your granny square is, okay? This is going to be part of the length that you're creating. So let's backtrack just a tiny bit, just to make sure that you guys have enough information to get this started so that you love it, okay? 
So when we go back to part one for this, part one gives us a lot of measurements, uh, like panel size, like gauge, and it tells you what the size is for one granny square. Again, that's based on the sample that I made, okay? So we can kind of play around with this a little bit. So there's a lot of liberties you can take with this pattern, and that's why I love it so much. So think about how you want your, your poncho to fit you. Some ponchos can be a little small. They don't have to be really big and giant and oversized in winter. They can be a little small and a little petite. And I think that's really cute in terms of style if you are wearing it over a summer dress or a spring outfit or something like that. And then in my opinion, the bigger, bulkier ones are more for fall or winter. But if you wanna make a giant oversized poncho with a cotton yarn or something like that, because that will be a really awesome style for you for warmer months, you go right on ahead. So I don't want you to get stuck in the terms of, well, I'm typically a size large, so what is size large for me? Don't really think in those terms. Think about how you want the poncho to fit, and there's some advice when you click on the link in the video description that talks about the finished measurements and how to measure. So there is long or length, and then there is a cross or width, okay? So what you're gonna do is take a fabric tape measure, and just as it tells you in the, in the description, what you're going to do is measure from the top of your shoulder, and you're going to measure wherever, you're gonna stop wherever you want that poncho to fit. So if you want that poncho to go to your hips, if you want it to go a little past your hips, if you want it to stop right at the top of your thigh, the bottom of your thigh, think about where you want it to fit, okay? That's going to be half your length. So let's say half your length is 30 inches, okay? So from here to wherever you want it to end, let's say on the front side, that's 30 inches. All you're going to do is double that. So your poncho, you want it to be, to have a length of 60 inches because when you fold that fabric in half, it's gonna be 30 on the front, 30 on the back, okay? So that's the only measurement we need to worry about so far. Then, once you have that measurement, and it's entirely up to you, and it's completely adjustable, so let's say you're measuring now and you go, well, I thought I wanted it to be 60 inches, but actually, I want it to be a little longer or I want it to be a little shorter. It's so easy to adjust. And let me tell you how. All of these granny squares that you're making, you're going to make them individually. And then once you're going to complete one full granny square, and then you're going to use a joining method called join as you go. If you've never worked it before, click on the link in the video description. I have a video tutorial to show you. So every granny square after the first one, what you're going to do is you're going to complete the entire granny square until you get to the final round that you want all of your granny squares to be because they have to be the same size, okay? When you get to the final round, you're going to join that round with the last granny square that you created, okay? With that join as you go method, and you're only gonna join it across one side. So one granny square, two granny square, three granny square. Do you see where I'm going? And then it's going to create this long line of single granny squares that are joined together on just one side. Now, I have a few tips for you so that way you can make sure that as you're doing this, you have something that you're really happy with. Last week, I talked a lot about yarn and there's a few important points that I want to continue to make about yarn, especially now that you have the pattern that you're gonna be working. Now, sometimes it's a great idea to, to swatch. This is a great sometimes project. This is definitely the kind of project where you want to create some kind of swatch. And you want, whenever you're creating a swatch, it's really just one granny square. Just do that with whatever yarn you chose, okay? And I want you to think about a few things as you make your first swatch, your first granny square. I want you to think about how the colors look. While this is a solid color, it may not be your best in your best interest to choose a solid color yarn because you're spending so much time creating each one of these individual granny squares and you want them to stand out. So that's why I chose um, Red Heart Unforgettable is that it has this very long repeat of colors that, that change. So every granny square has a few different colors and every granny square looks very different. 
If you think using solid color and you want to create a solid color project, if you think that looks good, then don't let anybody tell you different. It's whatever you want and whatever you think looks best. I'm just telling you the reason I chose the type of yarn color that I chose. So definitely think about color as you create your first granny square, just to make sure that the color that you're using, do you want it to, you know, is it blending nicely? Is it really showing off this motif? And is it going to show off all the motifs that you're creating in a way that you really love? Next, think about the look and the feel of the fabric, okay? So the look and the feel of the fabric that I wanted um, I wanted something that was not going to be stiff. So you see, this is a little stiff because it's so bulky, right? It's still kind of flat. It's not, you know, it's, it's a little, it's a little stiff. Maybe you want that. Maybe that's exactly what you're going for. I wanted something that was loose and fluid and had fantastic drape. I wanted something that moved with me. So the yarn that I chose has a lot of movement. It isn't stiff. If you think that the granny squares that you're creating are a little stiff, there's a few things that you can do to change that. It could be the yarn. It could be your hook size. You can do something as simple as, if you love the yarn that you're using, maybe go up one size in terms of hook because you want your stitches to be loose and fluid. You want your fabric to be loose and fluid. This is absolutely the kind of garment that um, you want it to drape really nicely. So going up maybe a hook size or even two, if you like the look of that fabric, if you like how it just kind of cascades and crinkles, try that out. See what it looks like on one granny square, okay? Um, so another thing, last but not least, we're going to measure these granny squares. Again, my pattern called for red heart yarn, unforgettable, making a granny square. I wanted my granny square to be six and a half inches. So it's no matter how you measure it, whether it's side to side or up and down, because it's a perfect square, it's going to be six and a half inches. Your granny square does not have to be six and a half inches exactly. It absolutely doesn't. So maybe you're using a different yarn and instead of having six rows like I do, maybe you have seven, maybe you have five, that's totally okay. It does not have to match exactly. The only measurement that you really want to get is the length of all of your granny squares together because that's going to equal the length of your poncho, okay? So that's the measurement that you want to get. And even that doesn't have to be exact to the inch because again, maybe you decided you want a 60 inch poncho because it's 30 inches on the front and 30 inches on the back. It's okay if it's 28 or 32, that's okay, okay? It's entirely up to whatever your style is. There are instructions in this pattern. Again, if you just wanna follow a pattern, you don't wanna think, you don't wanna have to worry about it. There are instructions here that give you panel size based on how many squares you create. You can add squares or you can take away squares based on what the pattern calls for because again, it's the measurement of all of the squares together that's going to give you the overall length, okay? So with that said, that's everything that I wanted to tell you about creating the granny square, making sure that the yarn you choose is gonna give you a fabric that you love and it's gonna highlight whatever color you choose in a way that you really love, okay? So now let's talk a little bit about joining the granny squares together because I do have some tips for you, especially if you're not familiar with joining different motifs together. So just think about this, especially as you're working through them and really pause as you create each motif really pause to think about these different tips and that way you're going to create a garment that you really love, okay? First tip, watch the, if you've never joined before, if you've never joined granny squares before, watch the joining video a few times just to get a hang of it, okay? Just to kind of really get familiar with it. I promise you it's not complicated. My dog Goose agrees. I promise you it's not complicated and it's absolutely something that you can watch and then if you've ever created a granny square before, you can apply it really easily, all right? So that's first, just watch before you do. Next, make sure all of your granny squares are facing the same direction. And what I mean by that is this particular granny square pattern is work so that one side of the fabric is, uh, is giving you the front of the stitches and one side of the fabric is giving you the back of the stitches. So if you're not sure what the difference between front and back of stitches or fabric are, the pattern does tell you that round one 
is the front. That's the facing side, right side. So that means this is the back or the wrong side. Um, whenever you're creating stitches, as you're creating the stitches, this, the side of the stitch that you're facing, that is the front side of the stitch. And everything on the back is the back side of the stitch. So as you're creating your granny squares, you're going to make sure that as you're joining them, that the face or front side of every single granny square is facing front side, you know, that all of your granny squares are facing that same direction. You don't want to have one granny square that's like right side and the next one's wrong side. Because as you're joining all of these together, once you join them together and you fasten them off, well, you're going to have to undo some work if you, if you have a correction that you have to make. So make sure they're all facing the same direction as you join them. Um, let's see. You're only joining these on one side. So as you create granny squares, again, you're going to create one complete granny square. The next granny square that you complete, you're going to join the last round of work only across one side. And you're going to join it from chain three space across the chain one spaces here. And then you're going to uh, end in the next chain three space. So it's only going to be joined from one chain three space to the next and each chain space in between. So definitely keep that in mind. So my last tip that I'm going to give you, and really this is just a tip so that you don't feel overwhelmed. Your granny squares, if you don't change color, which you're welcome to change color, that's another fun way that you can work up these granny squares. Maybe you're, you know, you're doing solids, but you know, your last round is going to be color B and everything else is color A. So what you're typically going to have, if you don't change colors, you're going to have at least two tail ends, okay? So as you're creating these granny squares, my tip to you, something that helps me really manage my project is make sure your tail ends are long. Make them like 10 inches long or something like that. Make them really long. You want a lot of extra length to deal with. 10, 12 inches is probably good. Make each one of these. So this is your beginning tail end. This is your, you know, ending tail end. Make sure they're long enough. And after you complete each granny square, what you can do is sew one to the other. I always like to sew, I mean, this is just my preference. I don't know why. I like to sew my ending tail end down to the beginning tail end. And then I knot them together a few times and I either sew them into the fabric or depending on the yarn that you're using, just knotting them together a few times could be sufficient. But again, this is going to be a garment. It is going to be worn. The fabric's going to get a lot of friction. It's going to be washed. So you want to make sure that these tail ends are going to be managed in a way to where they do not come undone at any point in time. So as you complete a granny square, just take a little bit of time sewing down these tail ends and you can knot them together or not, but just make sure that they're managed because that way, whenever you complete these granny squares, as you complete each one, you're done, you've finished. So that's, um, for me, it's a really motivating way to keep going in a project like this with all of these motifs, with all these different ends that you have to manage. So with that said, I hope that these are some good tips for you guys to follow along with part two of this crochet along. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, again, that's what these videos are for. So whether you're watching live or on the replay, just leave me a comment. As soon as I see it, I will get right back to it. So again, just a few updates for you guys. If you want the most uh, recent information on this crochet along because it will be released in parts over a period of time. If you don't want to miss a thing, make sure that you sign up to get notifications. You guys can sign up to get notifications and read all the details on this crochet along when you click on the link in the video description. And uh, also, as you're working up your project, as you choose your yarn, as you're working up your squares. I would absolutely love to see pictures so you can post your projects to Ravelry. And I have instructions and resources for you to do that when you click on the link in the video description. And you guys can absolutely share all of your pictures here in this group. We do have a hashtag that we're using. So whenever you add your pictures and you use our hashtag, then we'll be able to see all of them because they'll all be categorized together, okay? All right, so much fun. I have talked long enough. I would love to see who's here and what you guys are saying. So let me give a shout out to everybody like Donna. Hello, Donna, thank you for watching. Penny is here watching. Teresa, Teresa says, I found the recommended yarn, but in a different color, it will be delivered tomorrow. Yeah, 
one of the reasons I chose Red Heart Yarn Unforgettable is that it came in so many different color variations. I found a few that I really loved and I just thought it looked like such a gorgeous boutique yarn. Um, it's really economical and I had to order mine online, but I have seen it in stores as well. So I'm so glad that you enjoyed the yarn and I can't wait for it to arrive as soon as it gets in, Teresa. I'd love to see a picture of what yarn you chose. So keep us posted. That's one of the fun things about following crochet alongs like this is that we all can kind of, you know, just get inspired and, and see what others are doing together. And let's use this community to our full advantage. So definitely keep us posted. Teresa, thank you for watching. Tanya, Tanya says, is the only way to get the pattern instructions is to subscribe to All Free Crochet. No, but it is going to be one of the best ways for you to be updated. Um, one of the fantastic things that All Free Crochet does is they do send email notifications about this crochet along as um, as each part is updated. So that way you don't have to constantly log in or keep up or have to memorize. If you sign up for those email notifications, you're going to get a notification as soon as that part is ready. And that way you can just dive in and spend more time crocheting. Um, you guys can always just click on the link in the video description and that page will give all of the different parts of the crochet along and it will be updated over time. So you can just keep checking in there. Melanie is here. Hello, Melanie. So good to see you. My friend Jerry Sue Tinker is here. Hello, Jerry Sue. So good to see you. I was just looking at your project on Ravelry. I can't wait for you to keep updating that because I'd love to see. So keep us all posted on that, Jerry Sue. And thank you for being a part of this. Joyce is here watching. Deborah is here watching. Joyce. Joyce is wondering if the video is frozen for everyone. I hope not. Hopefully it's just an internet connectivity issue, maybe on just a few people's ends. Hopefully everything is working just fine. Alice is here watching. Jerry Sue Tinker got the dragonfly color in the unforgettable line. It is absolutely gorgeous. If you guys have not seen it, definitely um, check out the Ravelry projects because so, so far... Uh, there's quite a few projects that have been posted. So you can see those different yarns and those different yarn colors. And as a matter of fact, whatever yarn you guys choose, as you create your first granny square, do me a favor and just share a picture of it because I think it's going to be really inspiring to see how different colors are going to work up in just this really simple classic granny square. It's really going to inspire others to maybe feel like they can just dig through their stash and use a yarn that maybe they already have on hand or maybe you want something to pair together with your, with a perfect outfit that you have in mind and just seeing those granny squares are really going to help you uh, help you to make whatever decision you're going to make. So keep us posted. Bryant is here watching. Teresa says these tips are so helpful. Thank you. I'm so glad you find them helpful. Uh, I've made quite a few granny squares and I really enjoyed putting together uh, the project for this crochet along. And these were all tips that really helped me. So I hope that you guys learn from me and learn from some of my mistakes and hopefully just really enjoy the process. Virginia is here again for the second week. Thank you so much for being here, Virginia. Thank you for watching. Donna is here and says, I got this yarn in the sunset colorway and it is really pretty. I absolutely agree. If you are using um, Red Heart Yarn Unforgettable, again, the colorways for this are stunning. It really looks like a gorgeous boutique yarn that you found in some fancy schmancy shop somewhere. I mean, it really is stunning. For it being an economical yarn, I mean, it's one of my favorites. It's absolutely one of my favorites. With that, I will say as well, I noticed that some of you have mentioned in the comments that uh, Unforgettable is unyielding, that it's hard to frog, and I definitely will agree with you. This particular yarn, ah, I don't have any on, here it is. This particular yarn, it is a roving yarn, which means that it's just one ply, and it has this beautiful fuzziness to it. If you crochet really tightly with this, yeah, it's going to be very hard to frog. Fortunately for this project, 
you want your stitches and you want your fabric to be oversized a little bit. You, you don't want a dense fabric. So by nature, with you creating uh, larger stitches or stitches that have movement in them, fabric that has movement in them, if you need to frog this yarn, if you're following those rules and those standards, it's going to be easier for you to frog, okay? So definitely keep that in mind. So if you've used this yarn in the past and you're like, oh, not my favorite, keep that in mind that if you have loose stitches and you have loose fabric, if you need to frog back in any way, it's going to be an easier process for you. So hopefully that changes your mind a little bit for anyone who's used this yarn in the past and was like, I don't know. Hopefully this kind of changes your mind. Cheryl is here watching. Teresa's here. Phyllis is here. Tanya. Tanya says, oh, thanks for responding so quickly. My pleasure. Guys, I am so excited about this crochet along. I am here. I am committed. I am so excited to go through all of these different parts with you guys. Um, and so I'm so happy to help. If you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, just post them. I'll get right back to you. I promise. Okay. That's another reason this is a mystery crochet along in different parts over time. Not everyone has, you know, all day, every day to crochet. Sometimes, you know, we maybe you haven't sourced your yarn yet. Maybe you can only crochet on the weekends. So hopefully this crochet along is paced so that you feel comfortable enough to ask questions, maybe pause if you need to pause and complete it on your own time. Bryant is here from Zimbabwe. Thank you for checking in. Virginia says, I have used Bernat blanket yarn for my winter granny square poncho. Yeah, so I think that once you guys see the poncho or once you're working it up, hopefully you'll see that what I've created is definitely going to be a warm weather poncho. Uh, you can definitely layer it. So if you if you uh, want something that's cute, maybe over a long sleeve shirt or something like that, I think this can work as well. But you can absolutely alter this design to make it in any season that you want it to be in. You can definitely alter this design in other yarn weights and yarn types that you're going to be comfortable with. I can't wait to show you guys, but I'm not gonna show you yet. But yeah, absolutely, it's very versatile. Penny says, did you use a magic circle? Yeah, so um, that is a technique that is utilized in this granny square. I actually, I call it the adjustable loop, magic circle. It can be either one. That is how I started this. And, um, if you need, gosh, guys, I think I even forgot to mention, in addition to there being a video tutorial for this, I also had a good friend of mine create a chart. So this granny square is actually diagrammed. Every section of this project is diagrammed. So if you maybe just like written instructions, maybe you only like videos, maybe you like to see charts and characters and diagrams, I have all of those available for you. So the adjustable loop is absolutely a technique and you can use to begin this. But if you're not comfortable with that, if you'd rather just use a chain, you can absolutely do that as well. So the adjustable loop is certainly a technique that you can um, exchange if you want. So it's entirely up to you. Good question, Penny. Thank you for asking. Linda Bell is watching. Deborah says, I'm using Lion Brand Mandala Ombre. Hopefully the drape will be nice. The yarn is very soft. Yes, that yarn is fantastic. I really love the color variations in that. So I think that it's gonna be really interesting to see how that works up for this because certainly the color repeats for that are very long. So what you may see, Deborah, is that you're gonna have a few granny squares that are the same color before they change. So definitely keep that in mind. Some other things to keep in mind, Deborah, for that yarn as you're using it is remember, that is a much smaller yarn than what the pattern calls for. So don't go down in hook size, go up in hook size. You don't want to create tiny, dense um, motifs and fabric. You want to create larger stitches and larger fluid fabrics. So I do love that yarn. It's an excellent yarn for apparel and garments like this, but just make sure that as you're creating them, that maybe you're using a larger hook um, and then just, you know, again, you can make as many or as few rounds as you need. Just measure as you're going for each one of those motifs. So that way you're creating fabric that looks and feels great. And if you have any questions or if you just want to share your work, Deborah, definitely post pictures. We'd love to see. All right. Last comment that I see is from Penny. 
Penny says, I'm using Lion Brand Mandala. Again, Penny, everything that I just said to Deborah applies to you. So definitely keep us posted if nothing else, all right? Okay, guys, so that is it for my tips and my talk on part two for this mystery granny square poncho crochet along. Man, that's such a long name. I always have to pause and say it slowly. Um, this has been such a pleasure to host with my friends at All Free Crochet, and I'm so glad that we're doing this together in this community. Again, if you guys want all of the details, all of the updates, if you don't want to be searching every single day, go on ahead and sign up, uh, subscribe to get email notifications on this crochet along. You guys can easily do that when you click on the link in the video description. You can get all of the details, including the full schedule there. Uh, but remember, each part is going to be dripped out over time. So you can keep checking back by clicking on the link in the video description, or you can just go on ahead and sign up for email updates. If you guys have any questions, whether you're watching this live or on the replay, please go on ahead and post them. I will get to them as soon as I see them. And again, guys, I cannot wait to see what yarn you're using, what color you're using, and I'd love to see your first granny squares. So share pictures here. That's what community is all about. Not only is it gonna be fun and inspiring to follow, but it's really just gonna help us all motivate, uh, help us all get motivated towards completing our granny square ponchos together. I really, really love mine. I haven't worn mine because it's been a secret, but I cannot wait to show you guys this poncho. It really is one of my favorites. It's modern, it's fresh, it's beautiful, and I think this is the perfect season to wear it, okay? Uh, final shout outs to Penny and Cecilia Muller for being here. Hello, my friend, uh, Penny. And Teresa, okay, one last question and then I'm signing off unless you guys have any more questions. Teresa says, will using a larger hook give you a better drape? Uh, absolutely. That's definitely a tip that you can use to have larger stitches and th therefore larger fabric. And whenever you have larger stitches and larger fabric, typically it's going to give you a better drape. It all depends on what yarn you're using. Some yarns are just not very yielding, they're very dense, they're very thick, they don't have much drape. So even though you're going up in hook size, uh, that may not give you the drape that you're looking for. But absolutely try it. If you want to just try to get better drape, going up a hook size at least, and then just seeing how your first granny square looks and feels, that's gonna give you a lot of um, that's going to give you a lot of information about what you can do to create the best fabric and the best garment that you're going to love, right? Because you're going to be wearing it. So you got to make sure that you love it. All right, everybody, that's all I got for you guys today. If you are enjoying this crochet along, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear. Tag a crochet friend in the comments or share this video in at least one place where you enjoy crochet if you think they will enjoy this too. I'd really appreciate it. All right, everybody. Peace, love, crochet. Can't wait to see your first granny squares. See you next time. Bye-bye.